of you a very happy new year. The last time I traveled to a place where I go regularly in Florida, I did not see a lady who was very dedicated and was coming all the time. And I thought perhaps she is sick or some challenges in the family. So I asked her friend, why is she not here? Is she okay? And her friend told me, just before you came, there were so many swamis visiting, she is swamied out. <laughs> I'm going to trust that that is not the case with all of you. <laughs> After listening to all the messages. And that's because the subject matter that we are dealing with here <coughs> is yourself, is the infinite, it's total. It is that which can never be improved upon. It can be restated in a thousand ways, but it's, you cannot change it, you cannot improve upon it. And therefore we have the gift of the parampara. And my job becomes very easy coming towards the end of this. Because I, I just have to restate and reiterate everything that all the exalted ones that have gone before me have said. And that is why even though Pujya Swamiji is an impossible act to follow, I dare stand here after he speaks. what all the Swamiji's have said so far. I'm going to just take up again this topic of self-growth, just adding to some things. And this self-growth has, we have to initiate it ourselves. It is not something that happens automatically. Other kinds of growth happens automatically, especially in ashram. <laughs> the food is so good, we grow sideways. Old age happens automatically. We grow old, we grow more anxious, we grow more fearful. But this growth is something, it has to be initiated with the help of our free will. And here is where the free will matters the most. Tethered as it is by the Raga Dveshas that Pujya Swamiji talked about, that we are unable to manage. Usually the will is a slave to the likes and dislikes, the strong likes and dislikes. Constantly the mind is entwined in what the Bhagavad Gita calls yoga and kshema. Apraptatya prapanam yoga. Getting what I don't have is called yoga. And protecting what I already have is called retaining what I have, which I don't want to get rid of, like good health, things that I love, my house, my family, all this comes under what the Bhagavad Gita calls Kshema. So one is mired in yoga and Kshema pursuits. And therefore, there is no internal space for the free will to go towards this self-growth because it is not happening automatically. And this is what we have to do, that we have to initiate this self-growth. But how? If we are mired in yoga and kshema, as the Kathopanishad says, you know, we can get onto the wrong track of prayers. Prayers means that which is pleasing, that which is relative, but not the absolute. Treyo mandaha yoga kshema. This is what happens. And so therefore, 
we have to choose our company very, very, very carefully. Because this, at least in the beginning, this growth needs some kind of solidarity. We are used to this. If everyone around us is going to malls and balls, that's what we will also want to do. <laughs> and so out of one group, and I'm sure you've had this experience, when you first started to come here, everybody might have got a little worried in your friend's circle. What is this? Are you sad? Yeah, Trinita, who's come from Georgia, she was told. She is one of the trustees of the ashram there. And she was told that, what is wrong? You have such a nice husband. You have wonderful sons. What is wrong? Do you have a secret sorrow that you are going to the ashram? This is where the, the company that we keep becomes extremely vital to this decision for self-growth that the other Swamiji's have talked about. We have to choose this company carefully. And coming to satsangs, coming to classes, here, this is the place. This is the place where we can really afford to leave that tendency, the old tendencies behind and start anew. Because all we have really is the now. You know, Vedanta is full of paradoxes and Pujya Swamiji loves to play with them. And out of many of the things that he has said, one thing which I really like very much is his play on the now. He says that a point occupies no space, but a series of points makes a line. Similarly, what is now, you know? Now is occupying no time. Now, 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 no time. But a series of now is one's whole lifespan. Now, the baby is in the womb. Now, the baby is born. Now, the baby becomes an adult. Now, the adult gets married. Now, the adult has his or her own children. Then the adult gets old, then the adult leaves the body, the body goes to the tomb, womb to tomb, it's all happening in the now, now, now. A single now, right now, timeless, a series of now, nows make a yoga. This is a very beautiful paradox, a wonderful paradox. So all we have is the now. And right now, I can make this decision. It doesn't mean that I stop planning. I do plan, I have to plan. But that plan is now. Today, at the most, we can say. Now I may plan, I want a perfect retirement to face all the inflations, everything. And then in the next now, after attending the Vedanta class, I can plan for the ultimate retirement plan, which is to drop all the desires, so that there is no problem of how much money do I need to feed these desires. That is also happening in the now. And so therefore, coming back to the company we keep becomes very important. Satsang and growing together. This knowledge happens with, you know, mutual connections. That is how it happens. And this place is a very sacred place because it provides the facility for this self-growth and provides the ability to make that sankalpa to grow. I think of Arshavidya as a huge comforter that keeps the jignasu, the mumukshu cozy. You know, when you think of comforter, why does the comforter, you know, how does the comforter keep you warm? Comforter is not generating heat. I'm not giving the example of an electric blanket. I'm just talking regular comfort. That's another paradox. Comforter doesn't do anything to keep you warm. It's your own body heat. It conserves and gives back to you. That's what the comforter does. That's why this is a very comforting place. Whatever you put here comes back to you a million fold. 
in ways that cannot be recounted, in ways that they cannot even be accounted for. But you know what that is. You know how priceless this self-growth is. And that is what, my friends, we have to go starting forth with this new year. Thank you.